Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a Windows virtual machine on top of a Linux host. So we'll start off. I am running a Zubuntu here, um, which is Ubuntu with the XFCE desktop. Uh, it's a fairly minimal installation, but I've installed some apps that I use regularly. Uh, so this is my default uh, setup. So um, I have VirtualBox installed. This video won't show you how to install VirtualBox. If you're using Zubuntu, all you have to do is sudo apt install VirtualBox. Type in your password. And you can see I've already got it installed, but um, you would just hit yes, and then that would install it. So uh, what you will need is you'll need Windows 10 or 11. I've already got 11 installed, so I'm going to do a, a Windows 10 showing you how to do that. So if you type in Windows 10 download and you can go here, download Windows 10 disk image and you select the edition and then you click confirm uh, the language. So in this case English International, then click confirm. And then you decide whether you want 32 or 64 bit, and we're going to go 64 bit. And then you can see it's going to start downloading in the bottom left hand corner. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cancel out of that. Right, so the next stage is to create the virtual machine. And uh, so what we're going to do is click New. We're going to type in Windows 10. Because if you do that, it automatically selects Windows 10 here. And you've got to choose where you're going to install it. So I've got a drive that I'm going to install it to. It's up to you where you install yours. And I'm going to create a Windows 10 virtual machine in here. Click create. And that's where I'm going to install it to. So click next. Uh, you need to set the memory at least four gigabytes of RAM for Windows 10. So if your PC hasn't already got um, more than four gigabytes of RAM, you're going to struggle to do this. You need to have a decent sized machine uh, memory wise. So I'd, I'd recommend at least eight gig because um, your host PC needs memory to run as well. So click next, uh, create a virtual hard disk. Um, now the minimum you really need is um, 80 gigabytes. Uh, it, as you can see, it's saying 50, but at least 80, really. I'm just going to do the 50 because um, this is just a demo. Then click Create. And then you click Start. And you choose the ISO that you want to install. So you can click this folder icon here. And then you can click Add. And then you can find the... So you want to install. So you can see I've got Windows 10 here, so I'm going to click that. And that's the one I'm going to choose. And then I can click Start. So uh, we're at the Start screen now. And what we have to do is choose your language, click Next, and click Install Now. If you've got a product key, you can enter it now or you can click, I don't have product key. You will need to, at some point, obviously provide something to Microsoft to prove that you have a valid license. So I'm going to click that. And then you get to choose which version of Windows to install. So I'm going to do Windows 10 Home. And then accept the license agreement. And then you're going to choose Windows only, and you're going to choose the unallocated space. Click Next. And now it's going to go through the installation setup. It will take a while to do this. Um, so you can go away and come back in about um, half an hour to an hour. This is Windows after all, not Linux. So it takes a lot longer to install. So you see that the installation part's finished. is now um, going through the setup part. Um, it will sit like this for a little while. So again, don't sit around and wait for it. Just come back in a, in, a, in a while. Windows takes a while. That's just the way it is. So um, eventually you'll get to a screen and Cortana will introduce 
itself to you. Uh, out of interest, does anyone actually use Katana? I mean, who is uh, announced as this great, big, exciting thing? Um, yeah, has anyone ever used Katana and thought, yeah, this is a great idea? Um, the, the, there's certain devices from other companies um, that you have around the house and they, they are instantly useful. But being able to talk to my computer, I'm sorry, I don't find that useful in the slightest. Um, so it's a feature I just don't use. But anyway, get beyond the Cortana word and you get to this point here. So let's start with the region. It's picked the region for you. Uh, in my case, United Kingdom, click yes. And now it moves on to, we have some importing setting up to do. So you basically wait ages, do a couple of little things, wait ages, do another couple of little things. So even if you go away and come back, you'll find that you have to type something in and then a couple of seconds later, it's like, oh yeah, you can go away again now. I've got some more um, nonsense to get on with. Why can't I ask all the questions up front and then just do what you want to do? I don't know. Okay, so we're now at um, the account setup screen. Um, and this is where you can um, sign in with your account uh, and your Microsoft account. So I'm going to do that um, and I'll see you on the next bit because I obviously don't want you to see what I'm typing in this bit. And we're back in the realms of uh, waiting just a moment, just one more time. <laughs> Uh, now you can create a pin. And now it's asking, can it use your location? Let's say no. Find my device, no. Send diagnostic data. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, is it yes or no? Yes or yes. <laughs> uh, so Microsoft's not trying to capture your data at all, by the way. Everything's about advertising and grabbing cookies, etc. It's shocking. And now you can customize your experience. Uh, I'm going to skip this. Use your phone from your PC. No thanks. Back up your files. Um, and you save files to this PC in this case. The setup is never ending. Now it's trying to sell me PC Game Pass. Somebody remind me why I chose Linux again. Let Cortana help you get uh, Cortana help you get things done. Not a chance. And here we are, almost done. We just need a few more things to polish up. Just a moment. I think we might be in the boot stage. Oh no, we've got a little bit more waiting to go. We're getting everything ready for you. And here we are. Um, Windows 10 is now loaded, it's now bombarded me with messages that I don't want to worry about. Now it's worth noting that whilst we have Windows 10 installed, um, if I go to full screen mode, you only get a small screen. And we can get around that. Uh, by inserting the guest editions CD image. It's worth knowing now Windows 10 is a bit more problematic than Windows 11 when it comes to setting this stuff up. So I've installed the guest editions image. And you can see if you open Windows Explorer, you get this guest editions, you open that up. And you're going to run the Freebox Windows editions. And then you have to minimize it. And then in the background, this starts. Click next, click next, click install. And now it wants to reboot. So that's what we're going to do. And here we are. We're at the login screen. So um, what you want to do here is in the view menu, you want to make sure that auto resize guest display has a little check next to it. And then you can go to 
full screen mode. And as you can see, I've now got um, Windows 10 full screen. Now the performance of your Windows 10 is obviously based on how much power you've given it as a virtual machine. I haven't given mine much power, and so the performance is a little bit laggy, but it will work and I can use Windows 10 as a virtual machine on top of a Linux machine. Uh, and that really is the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.